Well, good morning. Morning. You can be seated. My name is Kevin. I am the pastor here at Tree City Church, and we are very excited to have you here with us today. We are uh, continuing on with our sermon series on, on Proverbs uh, called Living uh, Wise. Well, actually, the sermon series is called Wisdom uh, from Above, and the sermon uh, title today is Living Wise, because we talked last week when we opened our series uh, talking about how uh, living wise, uh, that is intentional, that, that, create, that comes from a spirit of uh, discipline. We have to intentionally choose and desire uh, to want to live wise. And uh, how we opened up with uh, in Proverbs chapter 1, it says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding. It's the beginning of gaining wisdom is the fear of the Lord. And when we talk about the fear uh, of the Lord, we're not talking about living in like some sort of holy terror. Uh, but what we're actually under talking about is uh, understanding that God is creator. He is in control of all things. Uh, that there is nothing happening uh, in your life, through your life, that's going on uh, that he is not aware of, that he does not know the solution to, that he does not know how to pull you out of. And so uh, when we choose to live out of that, when we choose to operate out of that mentality where we say, yes, God, you are the creator, you are over everything going on in my life, then we begin to uh, understand, we begin uh, to gain wisdom. And so we are going to be sort of stacking upon that and talking about, okay, now that we have that, uh, what is the point of it all? Uh, you know, how do we go about living wise? What's the, uh, the meaning behind uh, doing all of that? So if you have your Bible, go ahead and open it up with me, if you would, uh, to uh, Proverbs chapter 4. And if you don't have your Bible with you, that's okay. It's going to be provided for you uh, on the screen here. But we're looking at Proverbs chapter 4. And right now we're just going to start with uh, verse 7. It says, Wisdom is supreme. It is supreme. So get wisdom and whatever else you get, get understanding. Let's pray. Father God, we love you and we recognize you as the source of all things. And so in order for us to gain wisdom, we have to first acknowledge that you are where wisdom comes from. And so we ask, Father God, that you would uh, give us a generous with portion, uh, an, an unbegrudging portion of wisdom as you promised in, in, in the book of James. So we pray, Father God, that you would help us to lean upon you and to gain the wisdom that you have for us. Because, Father God, we need an encounter with you. We, this book is not a book just of information, but this is a book of transformation. So we pray, Father God, that we would be transformed by your word today. We ask it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, you know, if we talk about inheritances... You know, we talk, that's something we talk about, uh, you know, that's, that's not a foreign concept to us, is it? Inheritance. We know what an inheritance is, right? Uh, and now we can inherit lots of different things. You know, we, we inherit some things just simply by genetics, right? You know, Tim, you red hair. I guarantee you, probably one of your parents had red hair, right? No? Really? Does somebody in your family have red hair? Yeah, okay, so there we go. Genetics. It's something that gets passed on, you know, it's like a receding hairline in high school and being bald by 20. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for that. But that was something that I inherited, right? That, that was a genetic trait uh, that I inherited. Uh, that was just one of those nature things. And, you know, we hear that conversation of uh, nature versus nurture. We're not really getting into that today uh, so much as to say I think both uh, affect our lives. You know, and some things are by nurture. You know, some things are just because, you know, we grew up around our parents, and so uh, we share a lot of those same attributes. I have a really, really awful, just really corny sense of humor. Like, I laugh at the stupidest things, right? If it's a pun, I, you're right in my wheelhouse. You know, Tim shared one with me this morning. Is You know, the only thing flat earthers have to fear is sphere itself. And I just thought that was the greatest thing ever. And, of course, he had to show it to me because I'm too stupid to understand it. But he's like, no, the word sphere, get it? Oh, that's actually really good. So I share my dad's really corny sense of humor. It just comes naturally because my dad is also really, really corny, really cheesy. Uh, you know, I, I share my mom's compassion because my mom is always compassionate. And, you know, my both of my siblings are much older than I am. And so I was never around them. I was around my mom a lot. 
And so I saw her caring for people. And so that means that's how I understood life to be, was that you care for people. You become uh, compassionate. And so that's not a nature thing. That's more of a nurture thing. I was nurtured into uh, being compassionate. And then, you know, we understand that there are, uh, you know, material things that we talk about being an inheritance. You know, finances, you know, is, is the common one, right? You know, what was in the will? What was in the will? Somebody passes away, what was in the will? Because we want to know what the inheritance being passed down is. And so usually it's going to be like finances or, or it might be property. Uh, I remember whenever uh, my grandmother uh, passed away a couple of years ago and my, my parents started going through all of this stuff because, you know, she was like six weeks shy of being a hundred. So she had a lot of things, right? And my mom was just going nuts with like, oh, you should take this, oh, you should take this, because she was just obsessed with heirlooms. She was like, everybody should have something in grandma's. And I'm not, a, I'm not a particularly sentimental person, so it was like, well, we could actually use that wardrobe, but I wanted it because we could use it, not because it was a family heirloom. But heirlooms is another one of those things that we see uh, get passed down a lot. But I believe that we don't come to have those things. You know, we, if we have kids, we want to pass things on. We want to set them up for success in their life, right? We would love to be able to say, okay, Junior, here's you, here's you some money to be able to help you in life whenever we're gone. Or, you know what, you can have the house and all the property when we're dead and gone because we want to set you up for success or you know what here here's here's Kevin's hockey jersey meant a lot to him and so we're gonna let you have that right and I know it's, it's Tim again that, that's like soccer but it's on ice okay that's what hockey is but you know we want to be able to set those things up right we want to and I think that's great but we don't come to be able to do that unless we've lived wisely right if we blow our whole paycheck on Mexican food and Cheetos, then we don't have money to leave behind, right? right? If we don't pay our taxes, who's going to get that house? The government. We're not going to have a house to leave behind. If we don't take care of the things that we have, then we, know we don't have any heirlooms. To pass behind. So it takes deliberation, it takes wisdom, it takes management. We have to really manage our things well. But for probably the biggest thing that we can leave behind, because those things can be taken from us, right? Uh, Tim and I were talking about he visited the Corvette Museum uh, this uh, earlier this week, and one of the, of course, you know, they had that big sinkhole. Uh, some years ago and several Corvettes got ruined uh, as a result of that and, and it was funny because one of those Corvettes was on loan to the Corvette Museum it did not belong to the museum but somebody had said here's my Corvette I trust you to take care of it and then the ground said well there's nothing you can do about this watch it and drops and ruins it right yeah. so even if you think you've managed something well it can still be taken from you right but the things that cannot be taken from you that you can pass on is wisdom, is lessons learned. And so that's saying, that's what Solomon is saying here. Listen, wisdom is supreme. Wisdom is the most important thing that you could get a hold of because it's the most important thing that you could pass on, right? That's what Solomon is saying here. He's saying, listen, other stuff is great, but wisdom is what's going to help you get and maintain and hang on to that stuff. And guess what? Even when that stuff is gone, those lessons that you've learned can pass on. That's a legacy that's worth building. So he's saying, whatever you do, get wisdom. Whatever you do, get understanding. Don't stress so much about those other things, right? Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, meaning understanding that God is going to take care of everything is the beginning of getting wisdom. And so, you know, this whole book, the book of Proverbs, it's all a book about passing on knowledge. In the first chapter, in the introduction, he's saying, listen, my name's Solomon. I'm a pretty smart dude. God made me a pretty wise dude. And the reason that I'm writing all of this down is so that I can pass on wisdom. I can help people get understanding. I can help people get wisdom. Because he understood that that was the legacy worth leaving behind that was an inheritance worth leaving behind and so 
inheritances, they come from lives spent managing and, and protecting our investments, protecting and understanding that if I'm going to have something to pass on and I've got to take care of it while it's in my hands. So wisdom is not something that we could just pass on automatically, is it? It's not something that you just, you know, like, I don't just learn the stuff that my dad has learned because I'm my dad's kid. I get wisdom from my mom and dad because they take time to say, hey, I was in your shoes once. I had that same, a similar situation to what you're going through. Uh, let me share with you the things that worked for us. Oh, okay. That's how we gain wisdom is by investment. And so it's got to be in, it's got to be embraced, it's got to be cherished, it's got to be nourished and it's got to be protected. Because wisdom is it's not just knowledge, right? It's knowing what to do with the knowledge. It's making decisions based on the knowledge. That's what wisdom is. And so he's saying here, wisdom is supreme. Knowing what to do with what you know is supreme. So get wisdom. And whatever else you get, get understanding. He's not saying that it's bad to have other stuff, right? He's saying, but with that, get understanding. Get wisdom. There's nothing wrong with having some money. There's nothing wrong with having Corvette. There's nothing wrong with having a nice house to pass on. But more than that, more than that, we've got to have understanding. And so he's saying it's going to require us to be intentional. It's going to require us to work. It's going to require us to practice it because we have to acquire it. It doesn't just happen upon us. It doesn't just happen upon us. We don't accidentally get wisdom. It's earned through experience. It's earned through instruction. And so that's what Solomon is writing here. He's saying it's the most important thing that you can pursue. So we have to invest in learning wisdom. Now it doesn't necessarily, it's not Solomon's going to be like, all right, you're never smart enough, so you need to be a career student. Just take college course after college course after college course. That's not what Solomon is, is saying here. Now, I mean, granted, we can get wisdom, we can learn by that kind of stuff too. But that's not what he's saying. So what is he saying? Well, let's look again. Let's, let's move on. Uh, verses 13 through 19. He says, Hold on to instruction and don't let go. Guard it, for it is your life. And keep at, off of the path of the wicked. Don't proceed on the way of evil ones. Avoid it. Don't travel from it. Turn away from it and pass it by. For they can't sleep unless they have done what is evil. And they are robbed of sleep unless they make someone stumble. And they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. And the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn, shining brighter and brighter until midday. But the way of the wicked is like the darkest gloom. And they don't know what makes them stumble. So Solomon, he's basically writing here to listen. There's two kinds of people. There's the righteous who are wise and there's the, the wicked who are not. And look what the, you know, the, these wicked traits, is that something that sounds like we want? They can't sleep until they've done what is evil. They're, they are robbed of sleep until they trip someone up. They eat the bread of wickedness. Uh, they drink the wine of violence, so they're wicked and violent. That's something that we want in our lives. Is that a legacy that we want to pass on to our kids? Because ultimately, the lessons that have been passed on to us are the lessons that we're going to pass on unless we're intentional about gaining wisdom, isn't it? That's right. And so he says, the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn, shining brighter and brighter. Until midday, what he's saying here is if you pursue a path of righteousness, you're going to begin to see a little bit. I think God's going to help you see a little bit more, and a little bit more, and a little bit more, because his wisdom is going to make your life brighter and brighter and brighter, meaning your decisions are going to be more and more and more visible. But if we aren't pursuing wisdom, then we're walking around in the darkest gloom, not knowing what makes us stumble. Verse 21, don't lose sight of them. Keep them within your heart. Don't lose sight of them. 
He's saying, these are my saints. Uh, I guess I should have included verse 20. Because he says, my son, pay attention to my words and listen closely to my sayings. Don't lose sight of them. Keep them within your heart. Verse 23, guard your heart above all else, for it is the source of life. It is the source of life. Your heart is the source of life. So in verse 21 there, he's saying, don't lose sight of my sayings. Don't lose sight of what I'm saying. He's saying, you've got to study on it. You've got to meditate on it. Anybody here naturally awesome at like school and tests and stuff like that? Because I tell you, I was not. I was a disaster in school. Because I never took a book home. I never did homework. I slept through half my classes. I was not a very good student. I was pretty good at math, but I liked math until I got to geometry. And then there was a cute girl sitting right in front of me. I was a little bit distracted after that. I didn't do so well in geometry because I didn't study on it. I didn't meditate on it. I was not prepared for the tests that came. I think my teacher was naturally graceful just because she didn't want to have me again for a second year. So she was like, 69's close enough to 70. On we go, Kevin. Get this kid out of my class. So we've got to study. We've got to meditate on wisdom, don't we? I mean, it's available to us. We can make wise decisions because God has helped us to learn how to make wise decisions. But it doesn't do us any good if it sits on a shelf. We have to study on it. We have to meditate on it. We've got to be willing to act on it. And I think that's the hardest thing, isn't it? Because sometimes God wants us to do something that just doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel comfortable. Maybe he's calling me out of my comfort zone. And he's saying, hey, you know what? I want you to go back to McMinnville and plant that church. And I'm like, I don't know anything about planting that church. And he says, I know. But I'm going to be with you. And I got people who are going to help you. So go out of your comfort zone. So that's the hard thing, I think, is sometimes just saying, okay, I see what you want me to do, and I don't like it. It's not comfortable, but it's what I'm going to do because you're saying I, I, I have the fear of the Lord, and I'm going to trust you with the decisions that I have to make. And then look what verse 23 says. Guard your heart above all else, for it is the source of wisdom. It is the source of wisdom. Now, if you've got money in the bank, don't you want to know that that bank has a vault? Mm -hmm. I mean, I do, you know. Uh, I'm not going to shove my money in somebody else's mattress and walk away, right? right. I want to know that my investment is protected. And that's what Solomon is saying here. He is saying you've got to protect your investment. You have to protect your investment. And the, what is the supreme investment? Wisdom. So you've got to protect your wisdom investment. That's what Solomon is saying here. He's saying wisdom is in the heart. Because God is after your heart. And so he's saying guard your heart above all else. For it is the source of life. Just like we can't pass on money if we haven't managed our money well. We can't pass on our house if we haven't managed our house well. We can't pass on heirlooms if we haven't managed our heirlooms well. We cannot pass on wisdom if we haven't managed it well. There's a lot of words in this book, y'all. I don't know about you. I can't memorize all this stuff. I mean, that's just a whole lot of stuff, and I'm not that smart a guy. So I have to meditate on it. I have to protect it. I have to keep it and guard my heart. Not let crap come in and push it out. Because we cannot build a legacy of wise followers of Jesus until we ourselves are wise followers of Jesus. You follow that, Tim? Mm -hmm. We cannot be a wise... We cannot leave a legacy. We want our kids... To be wise followers of Jesus. I better have my kids in church. I better have my kids back there with Miss Michelle. I better have my students back there with Tim. 
I better be helping them. I, they need to see that I take Jesus seriously because they're not going to take it seriously if I don't. That's just the reality of it. We are teaching our kids what we take serious. And then we teach them what they should take serious by that. That's just the reality of it. I want my kids to be obsessed with hockey. Then they need to see dad's obsessed with hockey, right? That You know, Tim? You want your kids to be obsessed with the balls? I know you're setting them up for heartbreak, but you know, you still, you want them to be obsessed with the balls? They're going to see you cheering on the balls on Saturday. Dad, you're getting spanked by them gators again. I know, son, but GBO! That's, that's, that's the thing, right? GBO? Yeah. Okay, all right. And, and, and ball for life? Yeah, okay. You can see how much I follow the football. <laughs> But the things that are important to us get passed on. So is Jesus important enough that we're passing it on? Because that is the source of wisdom, right? Fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding. If we want our kids to be wise followers of Christ, then we ourselves have to be wise followers of Christ, because there's a lot of things that discourage us, that distract us from responsibility, right? I mean, we know we got to get up in the morning and go to work, and man, that alarm clock's going to come off, go off a lot earlier than I want it to. But you know what? I'm still, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm in the middle of this season of Breaking Bad. Man, this is intense. Man, I, I can't believe I missed this show for so long. But I don't, I can't go to bed not knowing what's going on, and so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna binge watch it through the night. How many nights are you going to binge watch that before work starts getting affected, right? For me, it wouldn't take long. But it's easy to get distracted by that. But, and of course, you know, like, man, it was, it was hot last month. It was a lot hotter than I thought it was going to be. And, and I know that electric bill is going to be high, but, man, live Mexican just sounds so much better than grilled cheese again. Man, I could go get a steak instead of eating this bowl of cereal, and then the electric bill comes here, and you go, <laughs> uh-oh. <laughs> I better go call Cash Express, right? Because a lot of things can, can distract us, but it's usually in small and subtle ways. We, you're not going to consciously make a decision to go spend $150 at once instead of paying your electric bill, are you? But if, you know, Monday night you go spend $20 at the Mexican restaurant, and then the next night, man, I. I'm just tired. I don't feel like cooking. Let's go to Applebee's. And so I spend thirty dollars there, and then all of a sudden you've done that four or five, six, seven times. You haven't managed things wisely, and then the electric bill says, "You still got to pay me." Then we haven't managed it wisely, and so it's usually small, subtle things that pull us away from, from the responsibility. So we don't make. I don't think anybody consciously makes a decision to say, "You know what." I just don't want to go to church anymore, ever. No, they wake up and say, man, I am tired. I could not sleep last night after that stupid Vols game. And I just don't want to go to church today. Well, then next week rolls around and say, hey, guess what? The Vols lost again, as they're apt to do right now, right? Okay. We're still tired. Ah, I didn't go last week. I cannot go this week. And all of a sudden, we've set up a, a pattern of skipping church. Mm -hmm. And then, meanwhile, there's John and Jane saying, oh, well, Mom and Dad don't take it seriously, so I guess it's not that big a deal. Because Scripture is teaching us that as much as we have our advocate in Jesus Christ, and it does. We, Hebrews teaches us that Jesus is advocating for us at the right hand of the Father. 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 Sorry, I just learned to speak English. But it also tells us that we have a very real enemy. And he is not advocating for us. Right. He is actively working against us. And I know that might sound sort of Disney fairy tale, I should think that there's some sort of mythical, mystical uh, enemy who's out to steal and kill and destroy. But I tell you what, 
follow Jesus regularly, commit your life to him, you're going to learn really quickly that there is an enemy actively working against you. That's right. It's the truth. It's the reality. And he's trying to distract you. He's trying to get you away from gaining wisdom, from learning wisdom. And he does this by any means he can. And he does that a lot by diversion, by shifting your focus. I should be thinking about getting ready for work when it's 1030 at night. But you know what? Breaking Bad's got another episode. I've just got to see it. i got to know what happens to Walter, right? And so he, he gradually puts us into situations, into temptations that I can look for just a minute. I can just, I can, I can look for just a minute. I can't, I can't, I can't take my eyes off of it. I can't take my eyes off of it, y'all. He sucks us in. He draws us in gradually. And that's when we begin to obsess over that thing. We begin to uh, experience confusion and doubt in our lives. It's because there's all these internal conflicts going on. Because we're not managing our investment. We're not protecting our wisdom investment wisely. Because you cannot point others to joy when you're looking for it in things. When you're looking for it in possessions. When we know that joy is found in Jesus, but I'm not actively pursuing joy in Jesus. I can't point others to joy, can I? Maybe your life is just a chaotic mess because you've led yourself down a path of chaos. Can I point anyone to peace if I don't have peace in my life? If, I have not, if I'm not experiencing the peace that is found only in Jesus, if I keep looking to fix my brokenness and broken things, then I'm not showing anywhere in what can fix the situations in their lives. Am I? So we have to protect our investment. And that's where it gets really hard. Because that now God might be calling me to do something that is not comfortable. Maybe it's a something as simple as, you know what, God is saying, I want you to invest into your kids the importance of being a follower of Jesus. And that means I've got to start going to bed a little bit earlier on Saturday night. Uh, maybe I've got to quit watching the balls right now. If I'm losing sleep over the ball. Listen, I'm a Preds fan. I know what it is to lose sleep when your team loses. The Preds play their Saturday night games usually a lot later than the Vols do, right? I'm losing sleep. But maybe that means I've got to stop watching the Vols right now so they can learn to throw a football. I know it sounds really simple, right? It sounds really concerning. Kevin, you're breaking that down too simple. I'm really not because whatever is distracting us from Jesus Christ and being a wise follower of Jesus, that thing is an idol. That's, right. That's the simple reality of it. And maybe you're finding, man, my life is full of chaos because I've got chaotic people in my life. I've got people whose lives are a mess. And guess what? My life is a mess too right now. So maybe right now it's not the healthiest thing for you to be with that guy, to be with that girl. Because their chaos is causing you chaos. And I know it hurts. I know it sounds bad. I know it sounds awful. But it may be that the wisest thing you can do is saying, I'm sorry, I can't hang out with you right now. i got to protect my investment. i got to get into the Word. i got to get into church. i got to get into a life group and, and, and be around followers of Jesus. I, if I want to leave a legacy of being a wise follower of Jesus, i got to become a wise follower follower of Jesus, and this person, this thing, this situation, this pill, this bottle is not helping me to become a wise follower of Jesus. And i got to turn away from that thing. Maybe you think, man, I cannot look, stop looking at this crap on the internet. Maybe you need to buy every stupid firewall that's in existence. Maybe you need to just call Charter and say, you know what? Right now, cut it off. It ain't helping me to follow Jesus. I'm about to start preaching y'all. So whenever that confusion, whenever that doubt comes into your life, because guess what? God is not out here to make you unhappy. Now, your happiness is not his primary concern. 
He wants you to be holy, not happy. But guess what? One tends to lead into the other, not the opposite way around. I never found myself getting more and more holy because I was getting more and more happy. But I have found that whenever I pursue holiness, when I chase after holy things, then I begin to understand what joy looks like. I begin to understand where peace comes from. And I understand that the things that weren't getting me there before, now I got them because I got Jesus. I got to calm down. So as we said last week, wisdom starts with the fear of the Lord. And that means that the fear of the Lord, the understanding that God is in control. Again, knowledge is nothing. Wisdom is useless without action. We talked about that last week, didn't we, Tim? Wisdom is useless without action. We can know all the stuff in the world, but until we choose to act on it, it does us no good. And so the fear of the Lord, it's knowing that God is in control and then operating out of it. Operating as if it is a fact in your life. That is when we begin to understand what wisdom is. We begin to gain wisdom. We begin to experience peace. We begin to experience joy because peace is only found in Christ Jesus. Because that Corvette got taken away, didn't it? Hey, guess what? Preds were doing great until they lost the Stanley Cup in Game 6. Oh, I know where I was at. And I was bombed out for a minute. But then I remembered that the Preds don't give me my joy. My Preds are just fun. But my peace, my joy, that comes from my Jesus. It comes from my Jesus. It's been a long time since the Vols have been a champion, but I can remember it. I remember it. But it's been a long time. It gets taken away from me that... I mean, hey, Penguins won't beat the, Stanley, the Preds for the Stanley Cup that year. But guess what? In October, it was a brand new season. And they didn't win it the next year. That joy gets taken away from you when that joy is not hinged in Jesus. So every head bowed, every eye closed. I wonder if there's somebody in this place who would say, you know what? I've been placing my, my, my hope for joy, my, my hope for peace in all the wrong things. But today, I'm going to choose, maybe for the first time, and maybe I'm coming back to Him, but for today, I'm going to, I, today I'm going to choose to follow Jesus. I'm going to let Jesus call the shots in my life. I understand that just knowing about Jesus does not make me a follower of Jesus. Following Jesus is what makes me a follower of Jesus. And I want to build a legacy of being a follower of Jesus with my kids, with my community, with my church. I want to have that influence. But I can't do it. I can't do it until I'm a follower of Jesus myself. So if that's you today, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. I'm not going to come embarrass you, call you out, or anything like that. I just want to be able to pray for you. Is that you today? Raise your hand. Maybe you're watching online. You say, hey, you know what, Kevin? That's me. I, I, I've been placing my hope in all the wrong things, and it ain't got me nowhere. But today, I want to choose to follow Jesus there's a, if you go to that uh, faithlife.com slash tree city, there's a decision uh, making card there. You can also email us prayer at tree city church tn.com, and I promise you we will respond to you. Maybe you would say, you know what? Kevin, I, I, I'm battling with this. I'm battling with this. And, and what, what you're saying makes sense, but it's hard because I know I'm going to have to let go of some things. I'm going to have to let go of some things that are really hard for me to let go of because this thing is important to me. This relationship is important to me, and I get that. It's hard. It's hard. And so would you pray for me, Kevin? Would you, would you just ask that, that, that God would make himself real and known in my life as I, as I grapple with this decision? If that's you today, raise your hand. Just a moment. We're going to stand. We're going to sing. This is going to be your opportunity. This altar is available to you. Tim and I will be here. We would be glad to pray with you. Let's pray.